This podcast is part of the Gun and Geek Network. The opinions expressed may not reflect those of other podcasts or affiliates of the show. We're Gun and Geek. Check out other geeky podcasts at GunandGeekNetwork.com. Get ready because geekiness commences in three, two, one. You have been granted clearance level 10. Stand by for shield debriefing. All information to be discussed here is classified and may only be discussed among agents of equal or higher security clearance. And now it's time for your scheduled debriefing. I'm Agent Stargate Pioneer. I'm Agent Haley. And I'm Agent Lauren. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. One-Shot Comic Palooza Panel 2014. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a fan-based podcast on the television show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And because we like to go big or go home... We're going to talk about the general Marvel Universe, too. Just a reminder, you can catch all our great content on our website, legendsofshield.com. And to contact us, just go to the upper right-hand corner, and you'll see all the great ways to contact us, including our voicemail line, right, Lauren? That's right. The number is 844-THE-BUS-1, 844-843-2871. So, this week, we had a giveaway going on, and... We figure we need another week so more of you could actually respond. Isn't that right, Haley? Yeah, we said if we got 30 likes on the Facebook page, we would give away the Iron Man 2 Blu-ray. Uh, we haven't quite gotten there yet, so we're going to take another week. Everyone get out there, pimp the page, and we'll try and get up to 30 and do the giveaway next week. And when you like the page, and if you want in on the contest for the Iron Man 2 DVD giveaway, go ahead and post whether or not we should use the construction hat or the top hat just a reminder the top hat is classier but the construction hat is functional yes very (laughs) functional so we actually had some news this week and the first one is we had something on daredevil on netflix yes we did this uh, made me very excited vincent d'onofrio was cast as wilson fisk aka the kingpin in Marvel's Daredevil on Netflix. Y'all might remember from the 2003, 2000, 2003 movie that Michael Clark Duncan played him. And I thought he was one of the better parts of that movie. Vincent D'Onofrio will be playing that character or a variation on that character for the Netflix series. And we know he can play evil. <laughs> yes, he can. We know very well that he can play evil. Edgar. Edgar. Soup. Edgar. Yeah. Oh my God. Y'all, y'all seen The Cell, right? Yes. Yeah. That is such a weird movie. <laughs> I, I used to watch Law & Order all the time, and I love The Cell. So when Law & Order Criminal Intent came out, I was just, I could not see him as a good guy after that. It just, it took forever for me to be able to watch that show and just not get creeped out by him. Um, and uh, I'm kind yeah. of surprised at the caliber of actor they're getting for this Netflix series. Marvel has a really good reputation these days. I mean, their movies are consistently successful. They seem like a really you know, good actor-friendly brand to work for. So I'm pretty sure that's given them a lot of cachet. Yep. But I just, for a Netflix series, I expected to see like a bunch of unheard of befores. Netflix is also doing pretty good on its own merits. I mean, you have Orange is the New Black. You have Hemlock Grove. You have House of Cards. Yeah. And uh, it's just, it's looking good. Yeah. And they're getting ready to do all sorts of new stuff. They're they're getting ready to bring back, what is it? The, the, um, not Firefly. No, the the bus, the with Mrs. Frizzle. Magic School Bus. Magic School Bus. Yes, I was about I to say. I loved the, the, that show. I was about to say the the lady that everyone thinks is a Time Lord, but <laughs> I, I, I just completely blanked out on it. I'm like, I used to watch it and I used to read those books, and I just blanked out on it. She did kind of have the Clara feel from Back to the Future. Yeah, like I, I saw some people saying, "What if she's a Time Lord?" and a bunch of other people were like that makes a lot of sense. It does. So. But yeah, Netflix is just on its own merits doing some really good stuff. And it's not such a terrible place to be for uh, a series. They're getting Emmys. Yep. This is going to be different than 
any Marvel thing that we've seen on the screen yet, because, or at least in recent times, because we've had the movies, which are, we've got nine of them, 10, if you want to count the 2003 Hulk movie, and they come out, you know, one or two a year. And so the storyline has moved kind of slowly. If you take a look at Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, it took us all season to get somewhere good. Netflix, once it, it... I'm assuming they're going to release it just like they released House of Cards or Arrested Development. They just put it all out there at once. And so people mainline it and they watch it all at once. So I, I'm wondering how the pacing of these series is going to go. My guess is it's going to be sort of like an arc of a comic book. They'll have that sort of overarching plot, but that same sort of like episodic feel to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like something's yeah. going to happen in each episode and then there's going to be the bigger story that takes longer to play out. Exactly. Which is, I think, the, the strength of Arrow is that they kind of found that formula. Ooh, I'm in the middle of season two right now with the Starling Tribune. And I got to tell you, I, I think the few episodes leading up to the mid-season finale and then afterwards, the series just it skyrockets. It just takes off. It's not slow and methodical at all. There's a lot of stuff going on. Now, I can't speak for the rest of season two, but I can tell you it's in this part of the, the series so far in season two, it's way different than season one, and it is different than Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We've talked about it before. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was constrained by Captain America 2 and any other connections they had to make. Haley, you mentioned the Thor 2 last time. So they, there is connections that they're making and i don't know how strong they're going to be in season two or not but i think arrow from the story perspective so far is better it's it's impossible to compare the two and i don't want to because arrows in its second season we've only had one season of agents of shield uh, you got to give a series and and a masterman like whedon time to develop i i get all that so I, I'm interested to see where it comes. But when you go back to the Netflix series, uh, yeah, it, if it's something every episode and that could, pertains to the longer series, but there's no filler episodes, it's just going to make the whole thing move a lot faster. And it's going to have a lot of more, more people interested in watching it. I'm interested as to what the ratings are going to be, if they ha even have those sorts of numbers for Netflix versus uh, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Num uh, rating numbers, which... Uh, w Haley, do you remember, we're talking about 5 million an episode at the end? Yeah, it was sitting right around that. Yeah, so I'm really interested to see what the Netflix numbers are. I think, I mean, we might even be surprised. There might be more availability for people to watch this stuff on Netflix than broadcast TV. Who knows? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how they do the numbers for Netflix series. I know it has to be like by downloads and stuff, but I, I'm not really sure what the metrics of all that are. I if I spent some time just actually researching it, I'm sure I could give a better answer, but yeah, well, I'm sure the boy, I was just going to close it off and say, I'm sure the boys over at legends could, uh, our consultants could tell us a little bit more. Um, well, we were talking about how, uh, there were things happening during the run of shield in season one that affected how they could play out their story. Yep. It, looking ahead at the movie calendar, it looks like the releases after this year are always May, July. So they're not going to have movies popping up during the run of the show anymore. Mm. But they might have some interplay with the Netflix series, though. True, but that's not going to constrain them the way the movies do. Mm. Plus, there's still some kind of rumor that the Netflix series will take place in like the 70s. That could be really interesting. That so could. you've got Agent Carter in the 50s, the Netflix shows in the 70s, and then Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. set in present day. Yeah, I'm not sure they'll do that. I think it could work, the Netflix series in the 70s, but I'd kind of like to see it in present day. Well, that could be I'll an interesting be bridge way. between the two TV shows. Like, yeah. you've got older versions of the characters you're seeing in the Agent Carter series and younger versions of the characters you're see seeing in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. See, my whole thing is of why I think they'd it the story could work in modern day. First of all, Jessica Jones is very much more of a uh, post-2000s character. Luke Cage and Iron Fist and Daredevil, they can work in pretty much any time period, though they were, you know, created at least uh, Iron Fist and Daredevil. I mean, Iron Fist and uh, Luke Cage in the 70s. Yeah. I think it'd be really interesting to see how those kind of superheroes and stuff would operate now that S.H.I.E.L.D. is out of the picture and can't come and they don't have the resources to come and kind of scoop them up. 
tell him to keep a low profile. Yeah. Yeah, it would definitely be a break glass in case case of emergency sort of thing. I've been thinking about that. I mean, we've talked about it a little bit, like where was Iron Man during the whole Captain America 2 thing? And, you know, where's War, War Machine? I keep on wanting to say Warhammer. Sorry, folks. <laughs> and where's War Machine in both the Avengers movie and in Cap 2? I mean, these suits can fly supersonic. You can go across a continent in a matter of minutes. So, you know, where the heck are they? So, I mean, from the plot perspective, you know, they try to isolate it off. They Just with people with overactive imaginations and nitpicky like, like us, we like to tie off those loose ends. But talking about Avengers, uh, we have some Avengers 2 news. Not a lot of news, but a little tidbit of information. The Hulk is going to play a larger role in Avengers Age of Ultron. Like larger, like he's going to get bigger or? (laughs) Not that they've said, but he's going to get a lot of screen time. Uh, Mark Ruffalo said his role is even bigger than last time and it's more complex and it has more layers and a bit more arc. Are we talking about Hulk junk here or are we talking about Hulk character? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I'm just, I'm really looking forward to Avengers 2. I think it's going to be really, really good. Yes. Uh, yes. I can only imagine this stuff getting better, especially since, you know, they diverted all activity away from the Marvel short from Captain America 2 DVD release because they were devoting so much energy to Avengers and the rest of the Marvel movies. So I expect the movies to be better because of it. Yes. So- and... Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, on the subject of Mark Ruffalo and the Hulk... <laughs> Apparently he has an official Tumblr, and I only found this out because I saw something on my dash the other day that said, petition for all the Marvel actors to agree that whenever Scarlet gets a blatantly sexist question, one of the Chris's just takes it instead. And he responded with, you have my signature. <laughs> <laughs> and this is like his official Tumblr, and so it's, it's like verified and everything. It's kind of awesome. So apparently Mark Ruffalo is a really cool guy. Who can yeah, everything I've cycle. seen of him, <laughs> everything I've seen of him is pretty awesome. I, I've liked every single movie I've seen him in, so that's good. Although that's probably not true. Every every movie I've seen him in is cool. I, he was great in Thirteen Going on Thirty. Yes, he was. <laughs> I've seen that over and over and over again. I bet you have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder why. <laughs> Uh, Something else that I've wanted to see over and over again is the new Guardians of the Galaxy TV spots. Yeah, something else I like more every time I see more of it, (laughs) Guardians of the Galaxy. We got two new TV spots uh, in the last week. It's mostly just the stuff you've been seeing in the trailers up to this point. There's, I think, a few seconds of new footage in each one. So there's that to look forward to. One of them's 30 seconds and one of them's like a minute and a half. So those links will be in our show notes. You can watch those. That's good that there's short because I have a short life expectancy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on, I've tried. I've tried. <laughs> have you all seen the Pop Funko figures for Guardians of the Galaxy? No. 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 I don't think I have. Oh, okay. When you get a chance, look them up. They are adorable, and I desperately need the Rocket Raccoon and Groot ones. <laughs> yeah, I think we are going to need that. Yeah, I already have a little Aria on my desk. And I need Rocket and Groot to join her. I am Groot. Yes. Oh, in the commentary, she was talking about when they did the modeling for that. And she didn't know that they were allowed to have eyebrows on their little dolls. So (laughs) when they asked her if there's anything she wanted to change about it, she didn't say that. And then she found out they could have eyebrows and she wished she'd asked for them. Aw. Aw. Although Rocket Raccoon definitely has inspired me. I have acquired a machine gun. (laughs) Nice. Nice. Yes, we've uh, you've seen pictures of it. It's a Nerf machine gun. It's great. <laughs> Nerf guns are awesome. The the house yeah. is uh, definitely sick of me <laughs> walking around. I think I shot every single person at the meetup with my Nerf gun. So uh-huh. yeah. Well, I know the la- at the last one I went to, uh, there was a Nerf war, and I think I hit a couple people, but I just mostly got shot. <laughs> I just shot people as they came through the door, like, hey, welcome to the meetup, pop. That's fair. For the record, I have a Rapid Strike CS18, and uh, yes, it is fully automatic, and I have many clips, so watch out. 
I have a Raider CS35, which is my primary, and it's like crazy modded. And then I've got another one, a Stampede, which is kind of bulky and hard to use. I think I and had then, to borrow one of yours. <laughs> yeah, and then I have my little Maverick Rev 6. Actually, I have two of those now. So this has been Nerf War Etiquette 101 <laughs> by the <laughs> Legends of Shield cast. So yes. how to uh, how to camp spawn spawn camp? It's been a while <laughs> since I played uh, video games. No, I've been playing a lot of video games. It's just been a while since I played a first person shooter. Mm. I, I I can't remember the proper terminology that people scream at you when you do it. <laughs> I think it's spawn camping. I think it's spawn camping. That sounds right. Okay. Yeah. So from the short 30 second trailers to 75 years, we have a Marvel transition. Yes. Uh, Marvel has this timeline on their site right now that covers the 75 years of Marvel comics. That's including when they were timely and Atlas comics, timely comics published. What was it was Marvel comics. Number one in October of 1939. So October of this year will mark 75 years of them publishing comics. The timeline, it starts out in the Golden Age and it talks about, you know, major trends in publishing and appearances of major characters and it goes through present day. When you get into the 70s, it starts talking about storylines. So if you want to avoid spoilers, don't read past that. But it's cool. There's a lot of cool information in there and I had to stop reading so I wouldn't spoil myself. (laughs) (laughs) What year are you in now? 1969, 1970. There's kind of an overlap on how far stories have progressed and stuff. Okay. So somewhere and, between the two. And you're using uh, what storyline again? Uh, there's a website called the Complete Marvel Reading Order. If you Google it, it'll be the first one. The actual address is cmro.travis-darns.com. It's a fantastic site. It's got a lot of character information, team information, and it's a work in progress. It started in 1961 and it's up to 1994 now. And also in the last, I don't know, couple weeks, he's gotten the Golden Age order started. So you've got comics from 1939 in there, too. Wow. Nice. It's pretty awesome. Epic. That guy is doing amazing work. Maybe we'll have to have him on the cast sometime. (laughs) Possibly. Well, we also got to see an excellent trailer this week. Yes, we did. I went to go see Maleficent the weekend that it came out, and... I may have squealed like a little girl (laughs) when the trailer for the first collaboration between Marvel and Pixar came out. The movie's called Big Hero 6, and it's based on a short-lived series from, I want to say, like the early 2000s. And the trailer, the the movie's going to be out later this year, and the teaser trailer was finally released and you can find it now online and they just released this past week a special little teaser in honor of the world cup which is baymax the marshmallow looking robot trying to get a soccer ball and it's adorable <laughs> if you get the chance go on youtube and look up big hero 6 trailer you can find the us and the uk versions on there and it's it's adorable. It really is. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, the whole plane with the soccer ball theme. I haven't seen it yet, but it just reminds me so much of a Pixar short. It, it's yeah, it's it's done very like the the teaser trailer. That whole scene is done very much in that. It has that sort of feel to it. Mm-hmm. Well, and finally, we have a little bone to pick. Uh, yeah, there was a link that I came across today about. The upcoming movies for the DC Cinematic Universe. Now, wait, just for clarification's sake, we are a Marvel podcast, and the only reason we're bringing this up is because we have a little beef with it. Yeah, because it's just not as good as Marvel would do it. Um, <laughs> no. It looks like they're planning to do three movies a year, though, uh, based on the calendar that we've seen. And this is just speculative. It's not confirmed by DC or Warner Brothers or anything like that. But they've got Batman vs. Superman in May 2016. Shazam in July 2016. You know, that that date's not right for Batman vs. Superman either, is it? No, hmm. I don't think so. Yeah, because I thought it was supposed to be end of next year. Well, and then Christmas 2016 is Sandman, May 2017, Justice League, July 2017, Wonder Woman, Christmas 2017, Flash and Green Lantern team up, and then May 2018, Man of Steel 2. Uh, right now, the release date is scheduled at May 6, 2016 for Batman vs. Superman. Wow, that movie is never going to be released. 
Uh, but in this article, it did say that the reason they were pushing it back is to get cameos from some of these other characters into the movie. And they have to, you know, get all the actors and things signed in. I will say that I'm very curious about Sandman because I love those comics so much. And they've been trying to make them into a movie forever. And I'm really curious to see, first of all, if they can manage to actually make it into a movie this time and what they end up doing with it. You know, with all the flack they've been taking, I can't believe that they're doing Shazam and Sandman before they're doing a Wonder Woman movie. Yeah, that surprises me. And the uh, May 6th release date is the same as Captain America 3. It's the same weekend. Okay, I think, yeah, I think. Oh, yeah, we knew that. Yeah, we covered that already. Yeah, because next year is Avengers, and then the year after that is Cap 3. Yeah, I can't, I I got it. DC is just not as together as Marvel, and they're they're 10 years behind, okay? But I right. think they'd have some interplay. I mean, yeah, a Christmas 2017 movie, Flash and the Green Lantern. Okay, who's going to play Flash for that? Are we going to have the... Presumably Barry- whoever they get playing him in Justice League. <laughs> well, okay. See, my whole thing is, if you compare and contrast how DC is doing their movies versus with how Marvel has done theirs... Marvel's formula has been very successful so far. They gave their kind of tentpole characters their own movies, and then they put the big team-up movie now that everybody knows who they are. And so they set up their universe that way. Right here with DC, we've had several different attempts at Batman and Superman. We're about to have a Batman who is not based off of the version that everybody has come to know and in some cases love. And then they're getting ready to introduce... I mean, Shazam is, I would not say, one of their A-list characters. He's an interesting character. He's not, I'd say, one of their A-listers. Well, and some some could argue that if you go back into 2008 time frame that, you know, Marvel didn't exactly have their A-list team together, too, because they they didn't own them. They didn't have the rights to their A-list team, but the characters they they used are the original Avengers, pretty much. Yes, those are like the tentpole Avengers. If you were going to do the tentpole Justice League, that's Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. That those are who like everybody thinks of when they think of the Justice League. And then, and then you have yeah. yeah. Then you have Aquaman, Green Lantern, Flash, Green Arrow. But for the most part, when you think of the Justice League, it's Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. Yeah, those are the three, and then the other characters kind of shift around them. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't speak for the new Flash yet. We're gonna have to see him. The the T V new Flash. But yeah. uh the Stephen Amell who plays Arrow I could definitely see him playing against the the big boys in the Justice League. And there's just no indication whether they're going to do it or not. So, See, I don't think that the DC television universe and the DC movie universe are going to be connected at all. Yeah, it's going to be a big mistake for him, unfortunately. But I understand. I mean, CW is not owned by their their, uh, cinematic people, so... No, it's it's still Warner Brothers. Oh, it is Warner Brothers? Okay, my bad. It used, yeah, it used to be the WB, and then there were a series of buyouts. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it, so- I think the CW is actually the combination of the WB and UPN. Yeah, it is. Well, I, then I hope they get their acts together. And, of course, there's no like Green Arrow listed on any of these movies, but it would be great to see Stephen Amell in the universe. Yeah. Uh. But if the Flash TV show is successful and is still going in 2017, that means they're going to have two Flashes going at the same time. Right. I don't think that's good for them. No. Well, they're already about to have two Batmans going at the same time, technically, with Gotham uh, and Batman You really Superman. think but Fox Go- is going to hold on that? Gotham's not really going to be about Batman. Yeah. No, but at the same yeah. time, they are going to... Ha- it's it's going to be, I'm betting, not in the same universe. And it's on Fox, no. so... It's so they're actually... They've got three universes point. running right now. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and also, it's, whatever animated stuff they decide to come back with. Right. It just, it seems like it's very poorly thought out. But talk about something that is well thought (laughs) out. Lauren, you were a con maniac a little while ago, weren't you? Yeah, I, I went to my first con in 2002. I was actually working, I mean, 2003, I was in college. Uh, It was my 2002, 2003 year. And I was actually helping to work at that con. And ever since then, I love sci-fi conventions And I tried to go to as many local ones as I can. There was one 
a few weeks ago here in Houston called Comic Palooza. And I've been to it several years in a row now. And it's, it's generally a really good con. They get good guests. They get a very large variety of guests. They sell pretty much everything you can imagine. And this past year, they had a good chunk of the cast of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I had to go to this one. And so you went and you actually took a, a recorder. Yes, I did. And you got audio of the panel. Yes, I did. All right. I did my magic on it, made it as good as I could. And we're going to we're gonna play it now for y'all. And then we'll come back afterwards and we'll give you what we think about it. New content. Woot. Yeah, woot. <laughs> exactly. We finally got new content. Yay. All right. Here we go. Finally. Everybody sit down. We're starting with or without you. Welcome to Comic Palooza. This is the year that they brought the heat, isn't it? I know. It's the biggest one that I think we've had yet. And we've got quite a show. Doug, this is Doug Falk from The Buzz. Hello, you know. Friday. This is Jay from Sunny with Jay and Dana. Hey guys! Thank you guys for coming out. I know this was a uh, very important panel. We got a lot of level, level seven access in front of us here. Yeah! Very excited. Who's excited? They're standing right there. They're standing right here. Now, folks. I asked this earlier, how many of you brought cameras? You can't take flash photography. No flash photography, so turn off your flash, please. How many of you brought cell phones? Every single one of us. You gotta turn off the ringer. No ringers. We don't want to hear your ringtone. What's a ringer? Hold on. You mean notification? I'm good. I'm good. Now, there are going to be spoilers. We've all seen the show, right? Okay, so don't go blaming us on any internet forum for, oh, I can't believe they talked about them. I'm ready, Doug. Is there anything else we need to cover? Are we good? Are we good? All right, let's bring these guys out here. Uh, Jay, you have the first. You know him from over 200 films and TV shows, actor Glenn Morshower, come on! From 24, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., look at this guy. Give it up. All right, you ready for your first agent? You all, there you go. You all know him as Agent Grant Ward. Oh, come on! A little hell of Hydra in here. Come on, Mr. Brett Dalton. She's one of the cutest scientists I've ever seen. <laughs> Miss Gemma Simmons, Elizabeth Hinstridge, everybody. <laughs> now this guy started out the beginning and he's still there at the end. He is uh, Mike Peterson, or we better know him as Deathlock. Yeah. Jay One thing I learned about this next guest is she never smiles in the show. Why is that? We're going to ask her, Agent Melinda May, meet now when.
greatest about uh, Doug and I is that we're fans. We are true comic book fans. We're fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're fans of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And we know you're fans too. So let's get right to some questions here. We're going to take 20 people. 20 people. We have, we have someone searching the room for people to answer questions. So raise your hand if you want to ask a question. And someone's going to come by and select you out of the crowd. His name is Paolo. Hello! Paolo! He's walking around somewhere. Over here. We're gonna do this. I got a question though. My first question is for you, Ming What? I don't think I've uh, I don't think I've seen you kick so much butt since you played Chun Li in Street Fighter. <laughs> what took so long? movie, um, I realized it was a lot of work, <laughs> and, and, and told my agents that I didn't want to do any more action movies, so it's kind of ironic that so many years later, I'm playing Agent May, Yeah. because now I love it! Yeah. <laughs> Alright, how about you, Brett, uh, when we announced your name, I'm sure you heard all the boos. Yeah, Hail Hydra right there, that's your biggest fan. We gotta ask you, man, how, how long had you been filming this show before you found out, hey, I, uh, I'm gonna have a twist. Hydra! Thank you. Who said Hydra that? Hydra loves you. Who no, said that? Hydra loves you back. Um, they, they told me uh, one episode before. Oh, so you didn't get that much notice. Were you excited Sorry, about it? What? Were you excited about the twist and the turn? Yeah, I was because they, they started giving me these scenes where I could really sink my teeth into it. And I got to work with Bill Paxton. Yeah. Did he not do an incredible job? Yeah. I mean, he was living it up. So, I mean, if that guy can enjoy being a bad guy that much, I figured uh, I could too. <laughs> uh, I do have one question for all you guys. Uh, I don't know if you guys have covered it yet, but uh, where's Fitz? That's what we want to know. That's what we want to know. Nothing? No clue. I knew that was going to happen. Where's Fitz? I knew that was going to happen. He could be in Tahiti. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. Well, we are going to go ahead and get started with the questions out on you guys, okay? Because that I know as a con, art, con person, not a con artist, as a con person, <laughs> Uh, the fans are the ones that like to ask the questions, so Jay, they've got a question right there. She's ready to go. She, she's too short for the mic. Give she's us ready. Yeah, give us your name. Abby Weatherman. Aww. Hi, Abby. Thanks for coming down. What's your favorite character <laughs> in the movie? <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> In the What's show? your favorite character in the show? I'm sure all of you will say every one of you, right? <laughs> or Deathlock. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we got another question. <laughs> yeah, what would you li like each of your characters to do in season two? Ooh. So many. I'll go first, since that's easy for me. I would just like my character to hug his son at some point. Uh, I got two. I would like, um, I would like to see Agent Coulson, or I should say, Director Coulson. Yeah. At some point, do something that makes people who ship Felinda feel good. And then if, if that's not being greedy, I would also... I mean, not right now, but... Uh, and also, if I happen to end up alone somewhere... I'm so sorry to interrupt. Uh, we have some special guests that want to say hi to you. Oh. Yeah. Uh-oh.
to come, but I told him I'd protect him. I, can, I can't believe how many people I love you and they clap for you. They'll clap for me. Anyway, I just, I just want to say one thing. I'm very happy to be here. First time in Houston. You people are fantastic. When I, when I, when I was 10 years old, I used to read comic books. I did not have a convention to go to, but my whole life, as a kid, I was to be like Walter Mitty, and I would always fantasize what Stan Lee looked like. Stan Lee created the comic book. That's why fast forward 50 years today, this is why I am because of Stan Lee, and I'm very happy. If I knew he was going to make a speech, I wouldn't have invited him. I can't keep a straight face because every time I watch Stan, he's always picking on me. He keeps telling me I need to weight train, I need to work out. <laughs> now, I've, I've got to go back there because of some reason or other. But there's one thing I've got to tell these people here. First, I want to congratulate you on the success of the show. It gets better every week. The ratings keep going up. However, however, I have a complaint. Everybody knows the ratings went up because I had a cameo in one of the shows. Do you realize the chance you're taking by not giving me another cameo? So I would like you to see to it. In fact, forget the cameo. I would like to be a supporting player. That's what they want. Else. I want to get a chance to give her another hug. And I can only do that if I'm on the show. Thank okay, well, sir, as, as the new director of S.H.I.E.L.D., let me make this promise about season two. We will be seeing more of the Generalissimo. This film is great. All right, Lou, take it away. Sorry to interrupt, but thank you for this great cast here. Enjoy that because they're the real hero. Hold on a second. Let's go back. Glenn, what is it you want from your character? Because we all know what happened to you. Yeah, my request is fairly simple. I would like my rib back. <laughs> Bill Paxton, so that I can live on and reappear in season two. Yeah! All right, let's take another question. Oh yeah, you know, Jim Steranko is here, and his work on, uh, on uh, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. changed comics forever. And I was wondering if any of you go back to the original comics to learn what this was all about, and if you feel the weight of the tradition that y'all are part of, that y'all are inheriting a tradition that really changed comic books, because his work on that book changed the medium forever. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. <laughs> to be a S.H.I.E.L.D. member, when I took a small part in a, a film called Iron Man, <laughs> and they handed me a page where I got to say that I was from the Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. I had read those comics as a kid, so I nearly fainted. <laughs> it's been such a blessing for me and for all of us, a real gift to any of us who've loved these comics. And I've got to say, Joss and Marvel's done an amazing job of hiring people who are nerds. Um, <laughs> To get to represent Marvel and S.H.I.E.L.D. as written by Strenko and a lot of other amazing artists. And every week, uh, we're trying with all our energy, us and our amazing writers and Joss and the Jeff Loeb and the people from Marvel to find a way to live up to the history of S.H.I.E.L.D. and of Marvel and to work for the people who Marvel's always worked for, the people we showed up in Houston for, the fans. I gotta say, the reason I came here, and the reason all of us came here, is really, we've had this amazing ride, and it, it just built to a great finale for us, and really that's been because of the fans who stuck by the show and supported it, and we're really grateful to you, so thank you.
Now, before we take another question, Elizabeth, I have to ask you, does, uh, does Simmons feel the same way about Fitz after everything that's happened? Oh! As a friend? Oh. Hey, dude, no season two spoilers. Yeah. Is he in the friend zone? I don't know. Let's just say what, however she felt in the past now, now it doesn't matter because the stakes have changed and they're a lot higher for Fitzsimmons' relationship. So yeah. Uh, he, he is and always will be her main priority. Okay. Nice. That sounds like every... Sounds friend zoned into me. <laughs> Let's do another question from the audience. After, after the events of Captain America 2, I think the show got a lot more interesting with Hydra being inside S.H.I.E.L.D. And my question for you, Brett, uh, I was wondering, when you turned out to be working for Hydra, I thought that was really interesting, and I love how you didn't come back to being a good guy <coughs> in the season. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you're gonna end up becoming a good guy in season two, or could we be able to keep you as a recurring villain? Because I kind of like you as that. <laughs> he makes evil very sexy, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. The fangirls have spoken. <laughs> it's worked out okay for Loki. <laughs> that bastard. <laughs> Oh goodness, I don't know, that's a, that's a very good question. I mean, you, you have as much information as I do about season two. Uh, obviously we have a checklist of all the cool things that we want to see in it, but uh, you know, they told me that I was going to be evil, uh, you know, the episode before, practically. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I really don't know. Um, but uh, have you guys, you guys liked me as a bad guy? Yeah! Just give me another chance to kick his ass. Bring Lou Frigno back. <laughs> I need backup. <laughs> now, um, Ming, I, I saw you uh, tell a story about uh, why your character was named Melinda May. Is there, there, is there a reason behind that? Um, well, uh, there was... She wasn't Melinda May to start with, because um, when I auditioned for the role, uh, the original name was uh, Althea Rice. So, um, yeah. I mean, it could have worked, you know, because uh, there's been a lot of superheroes that get called by a certain identifying. Right. Also, so, yeah. yeah. So, a Agent Rice could have worked, but. Um, you know, I think uh, the producers and the writers and uh, they, they felt that it was probably better to change her name and, uh, and give it give it a different kind of Asian flair. So, yeah, so she's May. There you go. We have another question. Uh, hi. Um, please forgive me for this truly ridiculous question, but inquiring minds want to know if there's any truth to the rumor that the male members of the panel are going to remove their shirts and flex their muscles. No way! No way! <laughs> Sorry, it's a family show. It's a family show, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I said no flashing! No flashing, remember? That's level eight. <laughs> <laughs> shameless, shameless question, by the way. <laughs> That's fantastic. Let's do another one. Please. <laughs> Agents of Chippendales. <laughs> we do need a new name. Magic Mark? <laughs> um, I'm sorry for being very nervous. <laughs> um, I truly did love your show, how it went from 
the beginning all the way how the expendable finale was. Thank you. Um, I have a quick question for Miss May, Agent May. <laughs> what's your favorite? <laughs> what's your out of all the episodes? What was the most favorite episode? Did you like? Oh gosh. I, I know the answer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, that's so Hydra. That was so Hydra. Where you made out with me, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, he did get to take off his shirt, which I, I like. Oh. Woo! 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 <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, what's going on here? Oh, 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 okay. Uh, you know, I, these questions are so hard for any of us to answer because, it, really, every time we get a new script, it's always like, Oh my god, this is my favorite episode. When, whenever we do our table reads, it's like, this is the best one yet! So, um, it, it's really, really difficult, but I... Uh, there's so many in each one that, that you know, I, I love. But, uh, yeah, I guess the one where I'm... I think what she's trying to say... <laughs> is... <laughs> the one she the one kicked your butt, butt, right? <laughs> I nailed his uh, foot to the floor. That was, that was. And I like the one where I nailed her to the floor. Oh. This kind of takes me back. I wasn't going to ask this question, but since the can of worms has been opened. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Uh, Brett and Ming-Na, during the show, you guys were fighting. And I think you know where this is going. One of the lines was, this is just like old times. I love that line. To which, hold on, to which you said, no, it's not. You were never on top. Oh. Now, Brett. Why? No, let's take another question. Come on, let's take another question. Come on, let's do it. Another question. Okay, um, Clark, I know that you said that you've read Marvel comics before, but for the rest of you guys, uh, what comics are your favorites? Or that you've read as a kid or that you're reading now? Well, I was a huge Alpha Flight fan. Yeah! Among so many others. Does anybody know the comic DN Agents? Yeah. No. <laughs> it's so obscure, but that was one of my favorites as a kid as well. Wow. Um, does uh, Archie count? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a little older. I, I, was, I was big into uh, Warlock. Uh, as drawn by Jim Starlin. I'm a big Jim Starlin fan. And um, Luke Cage, Iron Fist. I like some Howling Commandos. <laughs> yeah! Those are mine. All right, let's do another question. Okay, hi, it's Danny. Um, all right, this question is mainly for Brett, but anyone can kind of answer. So, if Grant does get his redemption arc, do you think he deserves it? Uh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> um, well, everybody deserves it. <laughs> Uh, I, I'd say. I, I don't think that there's anybody who's really, like, at their core evil. Um, I think that you make certain choices along the way, and I also think that his feelings for Sky um, are actually genuine. I think that he's been in a situation that he's never been in before, and uh, I'm not sure if he knows what, what feelings are real uh, and what's false. Uh, he's been on this bus for however many months and uh, starts to have some feelings in his heart place. Um, and uh, he hasn't had those before. So, um, so the whole thing is, is, is pretty interesting. I don't know if uh, Ward even knows what, is, uh, what he's feeling at this moment. He's a very uh, complicated fellow. So um, anyway, yeah. And in an answer to your question about me being on top or not, uh, just to go back to that, uh, really, I, I try to get the writers to change that. They just, uh, they... You fought hard to get them to change that. The truth uh, is always hard. <laughs> Let's keep it civil. Keep it going. This is, this is now you know what it's like on, on our job. This is what it's like. <laughs> Next question. Hi. Good afternoon. My name's Radana. Um, first of all, hail Hydra. Woo! <laughs> we never saw that 
are coming. Hi, we Jesus. love the villains, and you rock, man. You rocked it. Um, I want to know if you guys think that Agent May and Agent Coulson will get together, because they kind of have a thing going, and I'd really like to see them kind of hook up. Well, Ming's been asking for that. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, we don't know much about season two, as, as Brett said. I we... totally ship Belinda, by the way. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even make another comment. I want to try to keep this a family friendly. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I think, you know, we, one thing I've seen about Marvel is anything that the fans want they tend to kind of go after, so that, that seems like a reasonable possibility. And I think one of the fun things for us is that while we work for Marvel, it's an awful lot like working for S.H.I.E.L.D. Everything's on a need-to-know basis, and then we get the script and we go, oh my goodness. Yeah. <coughs> but I, you know, to, to really answer that for, seriously, <laughs> I, just, I, love, I love the fact that our relationship on the show is so ambiguous in some ways and so intense in other ways and, and there's so much history involved and and it, it's kind of fun to kind of have that dragged out I think the, you know just not being able to okay that's true because actually there was several episodes where it was not good between us no and no. it was it was hard it's a, it was a it was a relief when things kind of started when he Colson started to realize that she perhaps did have his best interests at heart Right, and, and I really love the di dynamics of just, you know, these two characters not being able to have that real conversation and yet they almost can read each other's minds and yet they can't go there yet. So, so maybe in season five, stay with us. Unfortunately, we gotta say goodbye to Clark Gregg because he's gotta go. No? No? Doug. Shield makes the rules. I see that. I'm not going to. The director decides. I am not going to step aside that passion. Go ahead. Next question. Hi, I'm Amber. I wanted to know if Brett thought that it would be for better or for worse if Sky and Ward got back together. Oh. <laughs> uh, better. Go ahead, next question. <laughs> First of all, Director Colson, thank you for saving somebody's life that I may be cosplaying as today. If he needs a life on a decoy, I'll fill in for it for free. Uh, here's the question. The word spoilers were mentioned. Age of Ultron is coming. Are you all involved in how, if you can go into it? I'm sorry, she said again, the words what were mentioned? Spoiler. Oh yeah? Age of Ultron is coming. It is. Are you all involved? And if so, can you? Well, I feel like this is a good place to announce that I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> that was, sorry, that was me. No. Um, I'm not kidding. This isn't, I'm not kidding when I say, I don't think so. Uh, I have no reason to believe that. Um, the way it works with Marvel is, <coughs> if, if some big thing like that is gonna happen, I'll get a weird text from like, not enough numbers in the middle of the night. <laughs> and suddenly I'll be on a plane to Ultron. <laughs> but I don't think so. Did y'all were y'all aware of what was going to happen in the Winter Soldier, if, like as the season was going out, or was it just script one? Winter Soldier comes out, and you know you kind of had maybe a couple of weeks' notice, if that, yeah. and then that was we it. We got an early, we got an early screening of it. Okay. And then we're locked to secrecy, so we could only geek out to each other about it, and then. Then you kind of knew what to expect after that with the next script. We heard whispers all year. <laughs> And then we had the screening and we walked out going, we're what agent, happens to we're us? agents of nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think that's what we were all asking after we saw the movie and we had that two days before the, the show. We were like, how is it all going to tie in together? So that was, that, was a, that was the writers, number one, in the movie. But that was also you guys being able to play that out and, and really doing that really well. But so in reality, we didn't that. see that early uh, cut of... Winter Soldier until, what, a week before we got that script that came after the movie. So we didn't have that much notice as to what was going to happen. Did that kind of play into the, how y'all did the role? Because, I mean, obviously that shock still is there. Y'all didn't have months to prepare for that. Yeah, we didn't have that. to act. Yeah, yeah we just... <laughs> yeah. 
we had a we had a table read as we do every week. We like to read the script together, get as many of the the guests there, and kind of let us feel the whole story. And at this particular table read, first they pulled us all into a trailer, and we were like, uh oh, <laughs> how can they cancel us in the middle of the season? <laughs> And instead, it was this kind of shocking moment where they handed us special red pages. I'm telling you, it's just like S.H.I.E.L.D. Wow. And in those, we all read the pages and everyone's jaw dropped and we realized that one of our, you know, core team uh, was Hydra. You know who it is. <laughs> I'm just so used to not giving spoilers, even if was, it's like something... Was I he getting dirty looks throughout the table read, like when it started happening? No, but Ian was sobbing, you know? <laughs> So yeah, life imitates art. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. What's going on, guys? Uh, resident Black Punisher here. Um, Ming, you're very distracting and I love it, for one. Um, Agent Colson, obviously you guys are hurting for some help, and I was thinking that you could use Black Punisher in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So uh, I was thinking we could figure that out. <laughs> Now, as Director Coulson, I'm tempted to say, done, but... There you go. Because I still am not on the, on the writing staff of the show, I will pitch it to them, because it's a great idea. <laughs> Next one. Hi, my name is Andrea, and my question is for Clark. Um, so, I know that in Marvel, you never really know what happens until they take you into the secret trailer, but you wrote, trust me. Do you have a secret death wish? Because, it, oh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Trust Me, close your ears. Um, because you die. <laughs> and it's a fantastic movie, by the way. But you wrote that part, so, and you're interested in jujitsu, so I'm just figuring, like, you have, like, a secret death wish movie. Uh, thank you for that brilliant question. Um, <laughs> you're very welcome. She's talking about a small movie that I made. I, I can't help myself. I have to use Which it. Which, if you have Netflix, it's you can watch it. there, or it will open. iTunes. I don't think it's on Netflix yet, but it's on demand. I know that because I ordered it. Yeah, it's on VOD and iTunes. It's called Trust Me. It's got an amazing cast. Sam Rockwell, <laughs> Justin Hammer, um, Bill Macy, uh, Amanda Peet, Felicity Huffman, Molly Shannon, Nisi Nash. Great cast. It's a little tiny indie that I made right after they killed me off before they called and told me I was still alive. So um, there are some things that you will recognize as similarities. There's a little bit of a kind of sci-fi fantasy element for those of you who are into that. I don't know if you... And um, so thank you so much for saying that. Thanks for checking it out. And uh, thank you for checking it out if you do. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Can I just do a quick fan poll of everyone in the room? Because I'm, I'm over here with a big scowl on my face. Just a big scowl. Who's the worst villain at the table here? Deathlock? Ward? Just checking, I'm sorry, continue. I, my character is not a villain for the no, rest of the No, he redeemed himself. I know, I know. I know, I know. He never was a villain. I never but saw him as a villain, he, so. You said the wrong things, man. You're about to get oh, blown up. Oh, man. I know. I'm all confused. He's gonna he's wake gonna up get, with a, a bomb in your head. And he's gonna get beaten up by a warden, and Deathlock's gonna shoot him. <laughs> What's the next question? Next. Got a romance going, that would never happen. Uh, <laughs> Wardlock. My question is uh, for everyone, um, I guess for your respective characters, would they rather uh, prefer to fight um, one horse-sized chicken or a hundred chicken-sized horses? And what would be their fans oh! sound? <laughs> Say what? Like, um, for every character, if, if they had to uh, fight between one horse-sized chicken or a hundred chicken-sized horses, which way, which choice would they pick and have what we really would be their pick of attack? Have we really got a question? I just want to know. Did you say a chicken-sized whore? A horse. 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 I know, I couldn't understand. Got it. How could you so, fight a tiny horse? A <laughs> or a hundred. One horse-sized chicken or 100 chicken-sized horses. Yeah, but that'd be so cute. How could you? I know. <laughs> okay, I, we have one question. Please make it a good one. We have one last question. Let's do it. Okay. No pressure. So we learned since the show went on the air about uh oh. 
He's talking about Chloe Bennett's uh, prior career oh. as a Chinese pop star, and that's her hit single. Is there any hope for a musical episode? <laughs> and, I don't know, Director Fury? And if so, do you have any duets that you want? Yeah, there you go. We're locked. <laughs> We've been writing a song called Shipping Felinda. <laughs> It's a Joss Whedon show. Anything's possible. Jen and Marissa have put out several albums. There's, there's certainly that possibility, but if it happens, you better pray that Chloe does most of the singing. Yeah. What are those, those one shots that Marvel does? Yeah. So maybe, maybe we could do a one shot. Kind of. Okay, on an EBD. Guys, thank you so much for spending time with us today. That was thank fantastic. You. Let's hear it for Glenn Morshauer, Brett Dalton, Elizabeth Henstridge, Jay August Richards, Lee Na Wen, Clark Ranger, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., everybody. That was a funny panel. It was good. It was amazing to be there. <laughs> so... I Lauren, I have to ask you, do you think the, uh, the the Stan Lee little cameo with Lou Ferrigno, do you think that was planned by everybody or do you think they just really just waltzed in? Okay, I am of two minds of this because on the one hand, my husband, who was also there but not sitting with me because he wasn't press, uh, he kept saying, there's, there's no way that they just, you know, they didn't know about this. There's no way. But at the same time, I was sitting right there at the front and the cast was so freaked out. It was wonderful. Ming Na was trying to like bend over backwards to get selfies with them while they were talking. <laughs> it I was saw adorable. some of those pictures. Yes, it was just adorable. I love Stanley so much. Yes, I was oh my I was like 25, 30 feet away from him and it was so great. Yeah, like dream interview if we could ever get anyone. Stanley. I tried. I tried. <laughs> they he did not have the time. Like they were very, very busy all weekend long, just you know, running I, from place to place. I think you're strong enough you could kidnap him. He's old and frail. <laughs> he is. The general but what Lucido. if I dropped him? <laughs> Don't what do that. What if I dropped him? Don't do that. He's got I'm insurance. Clumsy. Get your husband to help. This is why we bring him places. Okay, that's true. <laughs> so, Lawrence, since you're local, it was moderated by two of your local radio hosts, Doug Falk and Jay Rodriguez. Yeah, they, they host... Uh, they're they're like morning show hosts on the local like rock station, mm -hmm. and they're they're pretty decent guys. I've never had any problems with them, and they were you could tell they were really happy to be there. Like when they were, it took first of all, it took forever for everybody to get in the room. the The panel started about half an hour late, mm -hmm. which is why it was only like thirty five minutes long. And while they were while people were filing in and sitting down, and they were trying to direct everybody where to sit. They were kind of keeping up a banter with the crowd. Like, they were surprised that we had so many Lokis in the crowd. <laughs> like, you're really going to show your face here with Clark Gregg? <laughs> he had that awesome comment to Ward, too. Like, Ward yeah. was saying, yeah, bad guys are really good. Look at Loki. And Clark was like, yeah, I, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was it was great. The, the one... Question: I have many questions, but the the one question that jumped out at me is: You've got this great actor Glenn Morshauer there, and he, he did he it was hardly used at all. It's like I why know. why even it bring just, him? He doesn't really have a role in the universe. He was in what like two three episodes, episodes, three episodes. Three episodes, yeah. I do wish he, that he would have talked more. I did like his whole. I would like my rib back. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, even though. The rib was supposedly in the middle of his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the few times he got to talk, I liked him. He 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 was just sitting there, kind of listening to everyone, and you could tell he was kind of enjoying himself, just listening to everyone play off of each other. Mm -hmm. But I do wish that he'd gotten to talk more. He didn't seem like he had a big comic background. Well, other than the fact that he's been in oh, in comics and that he's read, or yeah, he didn't seem knowledgeable about the comics in general. Well. Yeah, not everyone is, but he's been in he's been in so much geek stuff mm -hmm. that I think I would have loved to if I had gotten the chance I would have loved to have asked him about just some of the other stuff that he's worked on. Mm -hmm. But since this was a shield panel and he had a limited experience working on that, I I wish they'd asked him a little bit more about his role on the show. 
I, I do wish, but since it was such a short panel, given that it started so late and they had to seriously whisk them off right after to their autograph sessions and their pictures. So there was, there was pretty much no time. And then, you know, Migna started it out with, you know, I, I, I didn't want to do any more action movies after her experience <laughs> is what we shall say with Street Fighter. She didn't even say the name of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Like she's totally wanted to forget it. I, I, I can't help it. I love that movie, and I love her in that movie. I don't think I've it's, ever seen that movie. Seriously? Oh, we have to watch it at some point. It's, <laughs> I was about to say it's so good, but it's really not, and that's what makes it good. <laughs> I have seen like three of the Mortal Kombat movies, though. Okay, yeah. It's, it's not on the same level as Mortal Kombat. It's, it's a whole different level than Mortal Kombat. <laughs> but it's, it's fun with how bad it is. That's good. Yes. And it makes no sense. But Shun Li was one of my favorite, like whenever, when I was little and Street Fighter had just come out, I was like, I want to play the girl character. And that was Shun Li at the time. So I I every played time, her too. yeah, every time I would play Street Fighter with my cousin, I would always play Shun Li. And I was terrible, <laughs> but I would try. And so I got just, you know, irrationally attached to Shun Li because she was who I played forever and ever and ever. Mm-hmm. And I'm I was terrible, terrible at fighters. I, I just button mash. I'm terrible at them. I have gotten bizarrely good at button mashing. It really <laughs> annoys my husband because he'll put all this time and effort into learning the combinations and I just mess up everything and button mash and win. <laughs> That's the equivalent in foosball of rolling the, the, the rollers, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it, it's pretty much the same, yeah. But so I you know, I, I love Shun Li because of that. I love her because of that. Ming Na. And then of course she was Mulan. Mm-hmm. And she was in the Joy Luck Club, which I loved. And she was on ER, which I watched religiously up until I was in college. And she's just, she's been in freaking everything. Uh, so Final Fantasy, amazing. The Spirits yeah, Within. Yeah, Spirits Within, which was one of Maya Scott's first date movies. Mm-hmm. And if you ask Sean, he'll say, never speak of the movie again. <laughs> and just, she's been in just so much stuff. It was, it was just amazing to have her there just kind of joking around. Mm-hmm. And it's it's especially weird with her being May and being you know, rage foo May, and then she's there giggling. It was wonderful. Yeah, she's had a great career. I just did not like her character one iota on Stargate Universe. So I was like, eh, I don't want to see her again. But yeah, she's made up for it. See, I liked I s- her a lot on that. I started too. watching the show because of her, and then I forget why I stopped watching. I think it was just it was like so I forgot because it wasn't very good. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I forgot to record it one week and I just kind of stopped watching, which is a shame because I like her and I like Robert Carlyle. Yeah, they were like the best parts of that show. So what is one of your best parts of this panel interview, Haley? Stanley. <laughs> He's my favorite. <laughs> he did steal the show, didn't he? Yep. Although yep. I will say that Clark Gregg, Marvel could not have a better <laughs> mouthpiece than Clark Gregg. The man is amazing. Director Coulson? Yes, he was just eating it up. It was wonderful. Ship Felinda, Director Coulson. He had his shirt halfway unbuttoned for that whole, I hear that the guys are going to take their shirt off. I swear, he had his shirt halfway unbuttoned. We do need a new name for the show. How about Agents of Chippendales? It was like all the guys except Glenn Morshower just stood up and started unbuttoning their shirts. I could see that. I I could imagine Clark's been working out because, well, <laughs> you know, he just has to in order to keep up his active lifestyle. Uh, somebody that surprised me on the panel was J. August Richards. He was very engaging. He was very in the lore. He was just excited to be there, and it was it was good. And and his suggestion on what he wants on his character in season two, it was like, aw, yeah, that's that's what his character would want. It's just, ah, oh, he's awesome. He, he, is. he was awesome on Angel, too. Yes. I watched Trial by Jury, Law and Order Trial by Jury, for him. I saw, like, the one crossover episode they had with SVU, and that's all I've seen of that show. I was hooked on Law and Order for the longest time because I watched it growing up, like, with my mom, which, I, in retrospect, is probably not a good idea to let, like, a 10-year-old watch back-to-back Law and Orders. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
But anyway, when that show came on, he was on it and that lawyer that they thought was dead and it turned out she was just in witness protection was on it. Oh, I loved her. Yes. And I can't remember her name right now, but I can picture her. Cabot was the name of the lawyer. I don't know what the actress's name is. And I was like, oh, man, uh, Gunn is going to be a lawyer on the show. I have to watch it. And then it got canceled just so quickly. <laughs> But I love him just taking these. He takes like, if you look at it, he takes these really good meaty roles. Like Gun on Angel was not a simple role. I mean, well, he the had, first season of it, the was... first season of it was kind of stereotypical. But then after that, he like he had some of the, I think the best character development on that he show. Did. Oh, so good. Yeah, and then he, this with Death Deathlock. I wanted to call him Death Clock. <laughs> But that's <laughs> Metalocalypse is a whole different show than Agents of Shield. But with Deathlock, there's just so much deeper character motivation there than, you know, cyborg killing machine. No, this is a guy who his son was being held hostage and he had all this stuff done to him against his will. And he was just trying to be a good person and got in over his head. And there's just it's a good role. And I really want to see more of him in season two. And he tells you in the first episode he is, he's in, it matters if I'm a good person. Which was the pilot. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had him all the way along and can't wait to have him in more season two. Obviously, he will be back, so that's great. Uh, another thing that we, mm, sounds like we're going to see is a little bit more Stan Lee. <laughs> If it's up to the director, we will. Yes. yes. The general. General Lisa Lisa <laughs> Of course, all he did wanted to do was hug Elizabeth. And who would? <laughs> uh, her answer about Fitz was interesting. I mean, they, of course, they're trying not to give away any spoilers, and they yeah. probably don't have any. But uh, it was interesting. Like, hey, there's a little bit more going on, and I think we're past that right now. I'm like, yeah, you just can't leave that on the table like that. But. I, yeah, I think she was trying not to give away spoilers or whatever they've talked about. I mean, I'm not sure if they've had any scripts come in yet for them to work on. But, I mean, I don't care if they're together or not. I just want my science babies to live and be happy. <laughs> That's all I want. Yeah, and talking about your science babies, you know, the, the uh, suggestion that Fitz is in Tahiti, the crowd did not seem to like that too much. <laughs> they did not. Okay, so when I was, there was this, like, there was this, like, ripple that went through the crowd of, oh, no. Like, you could feel it. It was, that is one of my best, like, the best thing about going to cons, in my opinion, is when you sit, even if it's just, like, a little panel, it's just a little kind of like a couple of authors talking to a group of like five is like the vibe that you get when you're there. And in this big room, it was so cool to just kind of feel the mood of the room change around you. Like the, my favorite part of that was the whole, when they introduced Brett Dalton, everyone cheered because he's the first one of like the main cast to come out. But then they remembered, wait a minute, he's a bad guy. And it changed to boo. -hoo! Mm -hmm. I've got a lot to say about <laughs> Ward and Brett Dalton. We'll we'll say that. We'll shelve that for a little bit. But uh, just want to go back to Fitz and Tahiti. You know, at first you're like, yay, it could fix him. But then, and then you're like, oh, the pain Colson was in. Do you remember that scene where he's like, just let me die. Just let me die. Y you guys remember that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's horrific. And then what Colson was doing at the very end, etching those symbols on the wall with a nail or a, actually it was a knife. It was like it? a, it was like a knife. Yeah. It's like, oh, he's so screwed up. We don't want fits in either of those situations. So no. not exactly a good suggestion there. Although what is a good suggestion is a musical episode. Although, <laughs> uh, although I, I will caveat that Haley last week, you brought up a could couple of ideas for a Marvel short, a musical AOS, a Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. little short, that would be a good suggestion. I don't see them doing a musical episode, but maybe an episode where Sky has to go undercover as a pop star in China. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> with, that would be awesome. With Marissa as a backup singer. <laughs> <laughs> and Agent May as her agent. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I would love that. Just... <gasps> they have they, yeah, they have to go undercover as like oh my god they go undercover as like a boy band 
<laughs> or like like no, an, ABBA, an ABBA-esque, an a ABBA-esque girl band. group. A yes, group. <laughs> it would be a girl group because now they they outnumber the guys on the team. Yeah, I just can't yeah. see Clark Gregg, you know, as a girl. No, he could be the manager. Yeah, and then you've got Simmons and Sky and May as the band, okay. and Simmons not being able to maintain a cover. Yeah, they're like can't. they're basically just like Destiny's Child. <laughs> So <laughs> that that's kind of like the uh, what what was that movie with uh, Sar- Sandra Bullock um, th- where she goes to the Miss America pageant with um, Miss Congeniality, Miss Congeniality. Miss, yeah William Shatner and yeah love that movie yeah so she'd be like that you're saying yes <laughs> yeah, yeah I could see that with like Trip as their roadie or something <laughs> or, or just their, the bodyguard their a- yeah their their agent or something I don't know but yeah we. We need to see this. We need to have just after like the darkest episode of season two, have that to offset it. Yeah. That'd be wonderful. Well, talking about dark. Okay. I'll, I'll go there now. Brett Dalton. Uh, all right. <laughs> I don't want to see Ward around. Okay. He equates himself to Loki. There's no way Brett Dalton is as magnetic as Loki is. He, he wants to have Ward and St- Sky get back together, which I guess is in character. So, okay. But he was trying to say that he was having fun with the turn because Bill Paxson could do it and he was having fun with it. So why couldn't he? Well, Bill Paxton, he, Brett, you're not Bill Paxton. <laughs> you're, you're not, you don't have that decades long history behind you. You're not that magnetic of an actor, at least not yet. So you don't, don't do that compare. I'm sorry. No, I, I think he was saying, no, that he, was he, saying that he was just having fun with the role. Yeah. And I think it's, True, it actually gave him something to do because up to that point, he hadn't had a lot to do because they couldn't push his character too far because they had this turn coming. I guess. I just don't want to see him again. I do. I Okay, what was it I wrote in my... Is it the abs? Is, it, is that No, what... no. Okay. I, I, want, I genuinely want to see... <laughs> no. I genuinely want to see what they're going to do with this character. I want to see if they take him down a really evil path. I want to see if they lead him towards like a path of salvation. I want to see if he... I, I want to see how badly he can self-delude himself. I want to see what it takes for him to have his eyes open to, no, seriously you were doing bad and you should feel bad. I I want to see the the thing that I love most about any character at all is character development. And if they can take, for, which is why I loved what they did with him in the show, because they took him from this kind of, you know, bland secret agent guy to a character that had a lot more depth because he was posing as bland secret agent guy because that was what it was expected of him. And now I want to see where they take him from there. And if they can bring him on this really, really satisfying character arc, wherever it leads, I'll be happy. And plus, Brett Dalton was really funny in the panel. Yeah, he was anytime just, I've seen him like interviewed or on a panel or something, he's been awesome. It's just that when he was on the show and he was just Agent Ward, good guy, he was kind of dull. And when he was a bad guy, he was really compelling. I don't want to see him anymore. I think I have it on my notes. Brett Dalton was seriously adorable throughout this interview. They need to keep him on just so he can keep answering questions. <laughs> well, he did. He, you know, out of all of them, I guess Clark Gregg kind of took the the hat there. But out of the rest of them, he probably had the most engaging answers. He he would take on questions that uh, were tough, and he'd try to make them funny and stuff. Okay, okay I'll, I'll give him that. I've got nothing against Brett. I, I've got everything against Ward. So that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Either you two have anything else you want to say about the panel? Um, I loved that. Apparently, Clark Gregg and Mingna ship Belinda. Uh, <laughs> Mel- uh, Felinda. Yeah, they they kept bringing it up. They just would not drop it. And then, of course, Brett Dalton kept bringing up the whole May and Ward thing. <laughs> and they and he would just not drop that until she brings the double entendre and gets really flustered. And then they finally drop it. <laughs> Trying to keep this family friendly. Yeah. Which you have to in a con. I mean. Not necessarily. I went to the uh, John Barrowman panel later mm-hmm. that day and it was it was skirting right there at the edge. <laughs> mm-hmm. I did be for Barrowman. Yes. He, he, I did get to see his Batman underwear. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> yes. Oh boy. It, it was a fun panel and I wish I had cons around me. I just don't. 
and the, me too it, you the thing is you probably do you just have to look for them uh, uh the nearest cons for me are in kansas city hmm. there's like some small anime cons i think that are closer but yeah sometimes those are fun i love going to anime cons to like look at the costumes there's <laughs> one that happens here in galveston in october it's like this is my halloween party but I don't even really watch anime, and they're not that close. See, the thing is, people dre the the one that I went to, people were dressed as Batman. <laughs> like I got whacked in the head by somebody dressed as Nolan's Batman because I'm short and he didn't see me because you can't see a damn thing in those outfits. <laughs> oh, no, you can't. Well, depending on what the mask is, but yeah, I I get it. I I just wish there was some closer. There are some smaller ones near me, but I, I would. The smaller go to ones are really good because you can get up close and personal with a lot of people like i got to talk uh, at aggie con the first one that i ever went to okay just announcement to everybody out there if you get a chance go to small local cons you will be surprised at how fun they are and how much one-on-one -on -one time you get with the guests i have gotten to, i I have gotten to talk with so many people that I never would have thought I would have. I got to meet one of my favorite authors and it got to the point where he had come to the con enough that he knew me and I got like happy birthday wishes from him. Todd McCaffrey and McCaffrey's son came to that con wow. enough that he knows me and my friends on a first name basis. Uh, I got to talk to James Obar who created The Crow. Uh, Brian Stelfries, who is, he's done a lot of, co of comic art, including the covers for one of my favorite comic series ever, Fallen Angel. Uh, he came, he had a rule, he has a rule that he will never come to any con more than nine times in a row. So I haven't seen him in years, but he came to Aggie Con like nine years in a row. Yeah, just, uh, Lonnie Tupu, the guy that played Captain Crace in the voice of Pilot on Farscape, he was a guest at my first ever con. And I got to wave hi to him because he was just walking by. <laughs> yeah, it, you'll 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 be surprised at just the type of people that you'll meet there and how willing they are to talk to you for the most part. So just go give it a try. You'll be surprised. Dress up, have fun, uh, make a day of it. Yeah, don't discount small cons. Big cons are I've been to a couple of big cons now and they're fun, but they're overwhelming kind of. The yes. small cons are definitely kind of more my pace. Uh, I'll grant you that. I will never go back to San Diego Comic Con, mm -hmm. largely because the whole ticket thing is annoying to me at this point in time. But also, it's just a lot of money. You know, the hotel rooms are just enormously expensive. It's a, a flight, long flight for me. And San Diego is a good place. Don't get me wrong. And the con was fantastic. It's just everything around the con has soured me on it. So that's fair enough. I, I doubt I'll go back, but uh, looking forward to trying out Dragon Con. I would love to. I've I I wanted to go a few years back, and then that fell through, and I didn't get a chance. So hopefully next year. Yeah. Hopefully next year will be my Dragon Con year. And at some point, I want to go back to Gen Con Indie. I went there last year, and it was so much fun. If you like games, like board games, card games, role-playing games, Gen Con Indie is the place. It was so cool. Are, it is was there wonderful. any con cosplay there, or is it just yes, like gaming? Yes, there is. No, there's people dressed up just all over the place. Uh, I brought one of my like easy costumes because I was like, well, I know I could fit this on the plane and not have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. And oh, it was, it was so fun. It's, it's definitely, definitely worth it. I've known people that have gone and they've had a good time. So, yeah, it's just uh, the gaming aspect at that point in time in my life didn't really appeal to me as much as it might now. So maybe it's all time. No, it's it's fun. I I had my first ever LARP session oh. at Gen Con. I got to be <laughs> I got to be a Russian spy trying to kill Rasputin. It was fantastic. <laughs> Haley, do you have anything? Uh, left on the panel that you want to say? Uh, I don't think so. Well, the one thing I got is that Marvel is like S.H.I.E.L.D. Everything's on a need-to-know basis. And <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that they just weren't going to share with us, either because they didn't know or they, they weren't going to say anything. Okay, I get that. But they did have a lot of fun, and it was great that you were able to go to the panel and get us the audio. Thank you very much, Lauren. And we look forward to possibly more in the future from you. I would like that as well. <laughs> okay. I would like to share con experiences with you guys. It's 
seriously, going to cons is one of the most fun things I've ever done in my life. And for all those who can't go to the panels and stuff, it's not the same as actually sitting there, but hopefully I'll be able to kind of, if not, you know, write about it or record it, then tweet about it, do something to let y'all know what's going on. That'd be great. That'd be great. And uh, for any more of that content, please go to gunnageek.com and check out all the lovely articles that are there. We've got some great writers there. I, I've, I've heard a rumor that Lauren might post an article or two in the future. Yeah, but... I've already written one about cosplay and what I learned about, uh, what I have learned from my various times cosplaying at various conventions. So that will be on com pretty soon. Our podcast is also hosted there, so you can find it there. Uh, don't forget, Iron Man 2. Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy, combo, giveaway. Like our Facebook page and then write Top Hat or Construction Hat down. Uh, next week, join us. We'll talk about Thor. Not Woo! one of my favorite Woot. movies, but you girls will love it, I'm sure. <laughs> Some of those Chris... Lots of people will love it. Yes. <laughs> Some of that Chris shirtless love. Yeah, there's love something Chris. for everybody. There's Chris Hemsworth, there's Tom Hiddleston, and there is Natalie uh, Portman. Jamie Alexander. And oh, Natalie yeah, Portman. I forgot about well, And Kat Dennings. She so. does Kat Dennings, who might be my favorite part of that movie. I know. I love her. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't get enough of Two Broke Girls because of her. That's great. Okay, so we will see you next week. Go to legendsofshield.com. Catch all of our great contact information. And Haley, we have a voicemail line, don't we? Yes, 844-THE-BUS-1. That's 844-843-2871. And until next week, I'm Stargate Pioneer, along with Haley and Lauren. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye now. Bye. Later. Thank you for listening. If you want to leave us feedback, go to gunageek.com and you'll find all of our contact information in other shows. You can also visit legendsofshield.com where you'll find our complete archive of podcasts. The music heard on this podcast is by Kevin McLeod and can be found at incompetech.com. The opinions heard on this podcast are those of the individual host and do not represent Legends, Stream, or Gunna Geek. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the property of the Disney Corporation. No infringement is intended. <laughs>